Today, we will be talking about Kristen Gilbert, the infamous angel of death. At first, Kristen had a seemingly normal life, but as she grew older, her erratic behavior and propensity for lying and manipulating others became more apparent. In 1989, she began working as a nurse at the Leeds Veterans Affairs Medical Center, where a suspiciously high number of patients died during her shift. We will learn Kristen Gilbert's life, crimes, and how she was brought to justice. Kristen Heather Strickland was born on November 13, 1967, in Fall River, Massachusetts. She was the elder of two daughters born to Richard and Claudia Strickland. Richard worked as an electronics executive, while Claudia was a homemaker and part-time teacher. Kristen had a relatively normal childhood, and there were no indications of her later criminal behavior during this period. Kristen exhibited a high scholastic aptitude and was a member of her school's math club. During her teenage years, Kristen began to exhibit a pattern of erratic behavior that was noticed by her friends and family. She had a habit of lying and exaggerating stories, often creating elaborate fantasies to impress those around her. Kristen was also known to fake suicide attempts, which she would then use to manipulate those close to her. Her behavior became increasingly volatile, and she would often lash out in anger or make violent threats against others. Despite attempts to seek help and treatment, Kristen's behavior continued to escalate, and she became increasingly unpredictable. After graduating from Groton Dunstable Regional High School, Kristen enrolled at Bridgewater State College in 1984. However, after a fake suicide attempt, where she left an ex-boyfriend a note in which she claimed to have eaten glass, the college officials ordered her into psychiatric treatment. Subsequently, Kristen transferred to Mount Wachusett Community College. In 1986, Kristen met Glenn Gilbert while a student at Bridgewater. She would transfer a second time to Greenfield Community College in Greenfield, Massachusetts to be closer to Glenn. In 1987, Kristen got a job as a home health aide with a visiting nurses association. During her tenure there, she once scalded a child with hot bath water, burning over 60% of the boy's body, but was never prosecuted for the incident. Kristen graduated from Greenfield with a nursing diploma in 1988, becoming a registered nurse. She would elope and marry Glenn later that year and take his last name. Their marriage had a difficult beginning, and just a month into their marital relationship, Kristen and Glenn would get into an argument that resulted in Kristen chasing Glenn around their house with a butcher's knife. In March 1989, Kristen became a nurse at the Leeds Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Northampton. Initially, she distinguished herself and was even featured in VA Practitioner Magazine in April 1990. However, soon enough, trouble started to emerge. The other nurses started to notice a high number of deaths in Ward C during Kristen's work shift, but they passed it off and jokingly started to refer to her as the Angel of Death. They had no idea how prescient that nickname would become. In 1991, the Gilberts had their first child, Brian. After returning from maternity leave, Kristen switched to the 4 p.m. to midnight shift, and almost immediately, strange things began to happen. During her shift, an unusually large number of patients began dying due to cardiac arrest, tripling the rate of deaths over the previous three years. During each incident, Kristen's calm and competent nursing skills shone, and she won the admiration of her fellow workers. Kristen and Glenn's marriage began to fall apart after the Gilbert's second son was born in 1993. At that time, Kristen was developing a friendship with James Perot, a newly hired VA hospital security guard. He worked from 3 p.m. until 11 p.m., and the two often went to have drinks with other workers at the end of their shifts. Anytime there was a medical emergency on Ward C, James was called to the scene. In the fall of 1994, the relationship between Kristen and James moved from friendship to romance. Soon after, Glenn began to notice an odd taste in the food she served him. Although nothing was ever proven, Glenn became convinced that his wife was trying to kill him. He told friends that she wanted him dead by Thanksgiving. When James gave Kristen an ultimatum to leave Glenn or end their relationship, 
Kristen immediately left her husband and two sons, moved into her own apartment, and their affair blossomed. In the meantime, whispers about Kristen continued, but many chose not to believe she would be involved in something as sinister as killing patients. Others were not so trusting and began to monitor drugs that could cause cardiac arrest. One such drug, epinephrine, kept going missing. Unofficially, Ward C was under the close eye of a handful of nurses assigned to it. Under Gilbert's care, four patients were dead and three others had succumbed mysteriously to near-fatal heart failure. Added to that was the inexplicable shortage of epinephrine. Although many of the patients who died were elderly and in serious condition, there were also patients who, although sick, had no history of heart problems. Yet they were dying of cardiac arrest. It got so bad that in 1996, three nurses came forward to report their fear that Kristen was a killer, and their concerns inspired an investigation. Authorities interviewed all the employees on Ward C and put together a grisly motive for why the death rate had tripled. According to the prosecutors, Gilbert stole epinephrine from the hospital stock and used the drug to induce massive heart attacks in her victims. It was surmised that Kristen administered epinephrine to patients so that her lover, James, would be summoned to the ICU. Veterans Affairs Hospital rules required that hospital police be present at any medical emergency. This allowed her to be close to James and impress him with her nursing skills. It also gave her time to flirt with him, as was witnessed by several of her co-workers. In July of 1996, Kristen confessed to killing patients during a phone call she made to James. Two days later, James would end their relationship and acquire a restraining order against Kristen. On July 16, 1996, James would be summoned to a grand jury to testify against Kristen. In the fall of 1996, Kristen would check in and out of psychiatric hospitals seven times, staying between one and ten days each time. However, the stays seemed to have not helped, as Kristen's behavior continued to become even more erratic. In September of 1996, she purchased a toy to disguise her voice and called the VA hospital while James was on duty. She told him that three bombs were set to go off in two hours in building one of the hospital. Employees and patients, many of whom were sick and elderly, had to be evacuated. The false bomb threat was the straw that finally broke the camel's back. On September 30th, 1996, the court ordered Kristen to be placed in Bay State Medical Center. Following her stay, she spent a week in jail and then was ordered to live with her parents in Seadocket, New York. The following month, she was indicted on felony charges for falsely phoning a bomb threat to a federal institution. Kristen Gilbert's trial for the false bomb threat began in January of 1998 and lasted for three weeks. She was found guilty and sentenced to 15 months at Danbury Federal Prison and treated for psychiatric problems. During her prison term, federal investigators exhumed several of the bodies of those who died during Gilbert's shift at the VA hospital. The toxicology analysis found epinephrine in the tissues of the patients, which confirmed the nurses' fears. Since the drug was not prescribed to any of the victims, there was no reason for it to be present in their bodies. During the investigation, Gilbert was not working, and immediately the death rate on Ward C returned to normal. In November 1998, Kristen was indicted for murdering four of her patients and attempting to kill three others by injecting them with epinephrine. It was discovered that during the seven years she worked at the VA hospital, 350 deaths had occurred during her shift. In 2001, she was found guilty of three counts of first-degree murder, one count of second-degree murder, and two counts of attempted murder. Although these crimes were committed on federal territory, the government did not give her the death penalty. Instead, she was sentenced to four consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole plus 20 years. Currently, she is serving her sentence in a federal prison in Texas. What did you think about the investigation, the behavior of the hospital administrators? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. Please consider giving this video a like if you liked it. That really helps with the algorithm. Additionally, consider subscribing to the channel for more true crime. Till next time, signing off. This has been Christina.